I still speak too fast. I'm going to talk to you uh, a little bit about portals, and in particular about IBM portal, the, the web sphere portal. Hopefully you all want to go out and buy one straight away. So, I would like to start with understanding with my audience you know, what a portal is. So, this is your turn to speak, because you wouldn't ask, ask me for any questions. We've got to wait a bit. So, what's a portal? From anybody, anybody want, you can read this, this gives you an understanding of what, of what a portal could be. But what is really, in the terms of an organisation, in the terms of IT, what really is a portal? A portal is a place where people collaborate on ideas and uh, seek solutions and more of the world. An interface to it's communicate, it's yeah? A two-way, a window, yeah? Anybody else? I think portal is an integrated uh, platform for various applications uh, where you can have a centralized install and uh, basically in interact with those applications uh, in any refined manner. An interaction platform? Yes, a platform it's an interface. interface. Yeah. And a window to your application to interact with them. Okay. How about for the applications to interact together? In my view, a portal is an interactive desktop of a person where you can prioritize uh, prioritize things, where you can uh, where you can see what is important for you for today. And so like this, that where I can, uh, I know that what I'm going to do today and what I could do tomorrow. So according to my need, when my uh, desktop is changing, and um, it, it helped me out in an interactive manner. Perfect. Come up here and do the rest of the presentation. So you hit it right on the nail, right? If we look at it from an employee's point of view, it's my window to my applications. It's personalized to me, right? We all label over our characteristics of that course, but you just hit it right on the nail. Personalization, just for me. The best experience I can get in my work or with my interaction with my suppliers or with my vendor, with my bank, with my hospital. All personalized for me. So I can have the best experience, quickest experience, most productive experience I can get. Now I like to use a great example here. It, it works better if there's lots of women in the room. We only have a few. Um, but actually it probably works better with men, I think, now, if you think about it. Go to the shopping mall, shopping arcade. All us men get dragged by our wives, right? And when we go to the shopping mall, we go through the doors and the first shops we see is either food court, which we like, we like to eat, coffee shop. But then we see hundreds and hundreds, it actually seems like thousands and millions of clothes shops, handbag shops, shoe shops, right? And the first thing I want to do when I see that is turn around and go back out again. And as soon as I find a seat to sit down on, my wife looks at me and says, you don't love me. You don't want to come around the shops with me. You've been away all week. You've been to Pakistan. You've been to Saudi Arabia. You've been enjoying yourself. The least you can do is walk around these shops with me. Now, the ideal shop for me would be I walk through the doors and ta-da, electric shops. Car shops, car showrooms, computer showrooms, software shops, a games arcade, and coffee shops. Oh, I would hate that. So, to me, a portal gives me that personalization. It gives me that shopping arcade. Right? So imagine if I was a, a, shopping, you know, a, a shopping arcade and I portalized all the shops. When you logged in, that's what you'd get. When your wife logged in, she'd get all the shoe shops. Obviously, your wife's not going to be happy because you're not coming around the shoe shop her and saying, yes, those shoes do look lovely on you, darling. How much? <laughs> I've, got a, I've, got a, I've actually got a great way to work on this one. Oh, no. Oh, they don't suit you at all. <laughs> so I always ask the price first, you see. So that would be a one way to this, right? So some of the principles, you want to be able to aggregate, as you said, to be able to take all your applications, all your shops, and aggregate them into one place, OK? You've got to be able to personalize it so it's safe to get all the shops that you want. It's got to be modular, because maybe there's some shoe shops you don't want, some clothes shops, shops you don't want. For instance, the women don't want the men's clothes shops in there unless they're shopping for their husbands. And it's got to, and here's the key thing about all of this, integrate, right? So when I talk about the integration, 
going back to the shopping arcade example, I go into the shopping arcade, thinking about my wife here, and she goes to the dress shop. We're going down to the ball. So she goes to buy a ball gown. What do you need with your ball gown, ladies? Shoes. Shoes. Accessories. Accessories. Handbag. Diamonds. Diamonds. Oh, I forgot the jewelry shops, didn't I? Come <laughs> well, on, conveniently. Um, so exactly so, you buy the ball gown. Now the integration, if it works out correctly, should suggest the ideal accessories for your ball gown, the ideal shoes. So if you're going to buy a red dress, what colour shoes do you want? Pink. Pink or reddish, right? But no. <laughs> Maybe more white. Sometimes. Yeah, but it's, going to, it's not going to give you a green pair of shoes to go over a red dress if the integration works correctly. It's not going to give you a green handbag or give you a red handbag or a silver handbag. Um, and because it's a ball, it's not going to give you silver, it's going to give you gold at the jewellery shop. So that's what the integration and personalization can give you. A fantastic web experience of this on the web, right? So you'd go back to that arcade again, to that website again, wouldn't you? I would. To people didn't have jewellery shops. Let's go about this in the business sense. Right? Portals offer everything. It's for business to customers, business to business, and business to employees. In every one of those ways that you interact with the web, you want to give the best web experience that you can possibly give. You want your customers to come back. You don't want them to go away and go somewhere else. You want your employees to be productive, have the applications that they need when they need them, and not when they don't. That also helps you cut costs because then you don't need to buy as many licenses and you don't need to deploy them out to desktops. Business to business, you want your vendor, you want to be able to create your vendors and your partners, your suppliers, and be able to make them work together and interact and interact with each other's portals. Use web services to deliver information. So again, the shopping arcade, we ran out of diamonds. Go back to the supplier so the diamonds are always in stock. Have that all automated. So we want to deliver a crisp business value to our customers, our clients our partners and employees. And we want to integrate with our business processes. Somebody over here mentioned about that, about the, the workflow and the business process. Integrating with our applications to allow that business process to happen. Now, I've got colleagues who work inside of IBM and they work in one of our other brands. And they work a lot with business processes. Um, they always seem to think that business processes start with business and end with business. But every process that you are likely to do has to start with what? Uh, people. people. A person has to start a process. You can't, you can't start from anywhere else. Somebody has to initiate it. It could well then be taken over by the computer. And it's got to end somewhere, right? Now, another, another computer isn't interested in the end result, right? At the end of the day, it could be another process that's interested. But then that process has to end somewhere. At the end of the day, a process has to end with people. <laughs> People. It's got to end with, it's got to start with a person and end with a person. It could be different people. It could be the same person. There could be multiple processes. So no people are involved in between those processes. But at the end of the day, it starts with a person and ends with a person. So that person or those people need access. So the business process has to interact with people. So anything that you do becomes people-centric. If you've got a document and you're working around documents, it doesn't start with a document. It starts with a person. It doesn't end with a document. It ends with a person. So we always look at people-centric collaboration, and we always look at the portal being people-centric, not process-centric, or application-centric. I like to look at it from an employee point of view of giving me that unified desktop. So, lots of many, many cases of using the portal. The first one I just discussed is collaboration, people collaboration around documents. The second one is self-service. So, an easy way to talk about self-service could be uh, going to the bank. An ATM self-service, right? You can do quite a lot of facilities at an ATM. That ATM, you know what that interface is? Portal. It's not just a web page, it's a portal page. Because when you log into the ATM with your card or put your PIN number in, it's then personalised for you. Not for somebody else. It's your bank balance you see on there, right? Oh, well, sometimes I wish it was like Bill Gates, but it's not. Um, they don't really make that mistake, right? But another area, as an internal employee, would be HR. HR is very, very much process driven, and a lot of people who work in HR are overloaded with admin. Anybody here work in HR or human resources? Anybody here have to deal with their human resources in their organisation? Anybody find it a great experience? Nothing. <laughs> we don't, right? It's a terrible experience. 
because they're, they're not acting over and over. They haven't got time for you. They're busy, too busy pushing a piece of paper out. They're too busy making a change of the payroll to change your bank account that you filled the form in on. They're too busy changing the address database to send you your payroll slip to because you've moved out and given the details. All that stuff you should do. Why should they do the admin? Right? If you don't get your payroll information in time to HR so that this month's pay goes into the new bank, whose fault is it? It's mine, right? But who do we blame? HR. Right? So if we could make it simple and easy for ourselves to do this, we would do it. Many things we would say we would do. Going on holiday, vacation, going on business travel. How do you go on business travel today? Do you go to your secretary and ask her to book the travel? Do you go to the travel agent and ask them to book the travel? Online. Or do you go online? Online. Online. Five years ago, what would you do? Travel agent. Travel agent. We've gone from the travel agent to self-service. Right? We're moving towards self-service. So that's why it's very, very key. And why did we move to self-service? Why did the travel agents move to revive them with that self-service? It's more efficient. It's a better experience for you. Convenient. It's convenient. You can do it from home. You don't have to go to the travel agent. And then you go on holiday. And so therefore, those savings, we hope, are passed on to us. Pass on those savings to your employees and to your different departments. In fact, if you take this away, self-service away from HR, they have more money to spend on giving us all pay prizes. Well, they never do. Okay. Enterprise internet. Who has an intranet inside their organization? Who goes to it every single day to check what's going on? Who finds there's no changes? It's the same old, same old, same old, right? Is that correct? Does it change rapidly every day? Is it new information? Or is there still some old information on there? Is it personalised for you? That's why you use, use web content management and personalisation reports, so that when you log in to your intranet, it has information that's relevant for you. You know. So you know what? I used an example earlier today on the CIO conference about traffic reports. You know, I'm over here in Karachi. I don't care how bad the traffic is in Dubai today, right? So if I log into my portal, I want to see, I want the portal to see that and personalize itself to find, you know, I'm not in Dubai today, I'm actually in Karachi. So the traffic portal needs to update automatically to realize that I'm in Karachi. If you go to uh, Google, right, there's a Google Pakistan, yeah? Google.pk. If you go to the Google toolbar and you do a search, the first thing that Google does is search websites in Pakistan for your search criteria. That's personalization. Right? If you have a portal and you have a web portal or a traffic portal, and you don't even need to log in, it knows where you are by your IP address, by your subnet. So it gives you information personalized to your location. Right? So that's personalization on your internet about knowing things that you're interested in. Right? If you're in marketing, you need to know about marketing and things that are going on. If you're in IT, you want to know things about IT that's going on in the world. Enterprise integration, we talked about this earlier, about the integration of applications, the ability to have, be suggested on the, on the right shoes, the right diamonds, and so on. That's what integration means you. Social integration, when we talk about social networking and communities, again, you want the portal personalized for you based upon your job role. So suggest communities or automatically enroll in communities and give you information and application of that. So, there are two priorities for the portal. And in fact, from, from IBM's perspective, we believe for an, an organization there are two priorities. The first one, I'll talk about in a minute, but the second one is, if you're going to deploy a portal, it's got to deliver significant cost reduction for you. It's got to save you money somewhere. Okay? So how do you save money by deploying a portal when I'm going to come to you and say, well, you're going to have to give me money to buy it and pay a business partner some money to deploy it. You're going to ask me, well, where's it going to save me money? Because you're going to have to save me all of that money back to, to be a benefit to me. So let's start with marketing. Faster time for marketing, giving information out a lot, a lot quicker. Right? So if I've got an exceptional web and I've got customers coming back time and time again, I retain my customers and they continue to spend money with me. Right? The money I've saved you there is the money you didn't lose. Correct? Right? If I give you self-service so that your HR can get on with doing their HR jobs and delivering more HR and having to hire more staff to do many of the admin jobs, I've saved you money there. Now I made a poor little admin person who was hired temporarily redundant, but I've saved you money. Sorry about the little admin person. But it happens. Right? 
So I save you significant money on labour costs. Now that, I mean, that savings could be applied elsewhere, hiring somebody else to do a more professional job. The second one is delivering an exceptional user experience. We all use the internet. Who uses Facebook? Right. Who likes Facebook? I mean, the web interface is horrible, isn't it? It's awful. It's not easy to navigate around, is it? Right? We still use it. Why? Why do we still use Facebook? Habit. Pardon? Habit. Habit. You're an addict. <laughs> Habit, yeah, you become addicted to it. You become a social network and you're communicating with people. And it happens to be the best and only media right available to us today, right? Everybody else we know is on it. Our family, <coughs> our family who, who travel all over the world are on it. We like to see what they're up to. We like to share our photographs with them. And it provides that medium. Now, who uses the instant messaging on there? Nobody. Yeah. Isn't that an awful instant messaging interface? It's a one-to-one, -one, for instance, right? I actually, when I do instant messaging now, I actually do one to one to many. So if I'm going to have a chat, say, instance, with, with my sister who's in the UK and my sister who's in America, and I've got to have two separate chats. And then, I'm, and, and, and then my sister in the UK is having a chat with my sister in America, and she's going to, well, you're not going to believe what Graham just said. And then my sister said, did you just say this to Pamela? Right? So then you've got these three-way chats going on. When, if we're all in one chat, we could actually see what each other's saying. Yeah. And if you want to take something that one didn't know about, we can start a separate chat for that. You can't do that on Facebook. We use Facebook because it offers us a return on our, our investment of our time, but it's not an exceptional user experience. MySpace wasn't an exceptional user experience, and what happened to MySpace, as we said? It's still there, but nobody uses it anymore. If, if Facebook don't start to improve their user experience, people will move away. Now, they never used to add IM. They knew that what people wanted IM. They want to get you off using MSN, so they offer you IM. It's very basic, but they want to offer you more. But that will come. So, we want to differentiate ourselves to our customers. So, if you're a bank, you want to give your customers an exceptional user experience. Who uses internet banking? When you log on to internet banking, what, in, what, what do you get that's personalized for you other than your bank account? That's your bank account, right? Your bank statement, your, your balance, <laughs> your transactions. <laughs> Do you get anything else? Anything personalised to you? Right. So, what do you do if you want a bank loan? You want to buy a loan to buy a new car. What do you do? You go to the bank. Right. You can get the help online, car financing. Car financing online. Right. So that, you're, you're also really the key one. You said you go to the bank. You didn't say you go to your bank. You go to the bank. You say you go to a car financing online. You said you search online. Right. Now, I'm the bank. He's going to a different bank for his bank loan. You're going to a car financing company for your bank loan, and you're going to try and find the best deal that any other bank can give you. You're still not coming to me. Why is that? You are far away. Pardon? You are far away. I'm far away. Well, technically speaking, I am, right? Because I've not told you for start off that I do car loans. Right? I haven't got an idea that you do a car loan. Let's just say a better example would be you've already got a car loan with me. Right? But I know you've had your car for three years now, the car loan's almost done, there's maybe three payments left. There's a very good chance you're thinking of getting a new car. Aren't you? Yeah. You're in for the BMW now. Right? I, as the bank, I don't want you to go and get a loan somewhere else. And I've got a lot of information on you, and I know whether you're a good credit payer or not a bad, or a bad credit payer, whether you've got a great balance, a poor balance, whether you spend all your money every month, whether you save it. So I've got an opportunity, using that information, to personalize the banking facilities for you. So I can offer you the bank loan before you actually start looking for one. Because I don't know about you, but who actually really takes any note of web advertising when they go to the websites? All the time? Of sometimes, right? There's sometimes being when you're actually looking for something and it catches your eye. So that's, that's, that's the difference. The bank has an opportunity to offer you personalised facilities, personalised offers, personalised solutions at the right time when you're about to look. So that's, that's the difference, that's what being the bank can do. And it doesn't need to be a bank, it could be your company, it could be, the shoe, as I say, about the shoe shop or the, or the desk shop offering you the right shoes. Right? So, 
Moving on, collaboration. Business needs mandates collaboration. What are the business needs? We need to innovate, we need people to share, we need to communicate, right? If we don't do that, people just get on with doing their daily jobs in the same way they do it, and business does not progress. The country does not progress, business does not grow. We don't move into new markets, we miss opportunities. We don't actually grow ourselves if we don't collaborate. We need a platform for collaboration. It could be the next one. I mean, as Uffi said uh, about moving forward where we're going with no safe, it's really becoming the client side portal. It's about integrating with the infrastructure on the system. So having your portal on your desktop. So when we start talking about it outside the organization, we actually want our customers to communicate with us as well, right? How many times have you run into a shop and it's uh, you've seen a sign post saying, if you like what we do, tell us. If you don't, so, no, tell everybody else, sorry. If you like what we do, tell everybody else. If you don't, tell us. Have you seen that one? Okay. Have you seen on the back of any car saying, um, I'm a safe driver, if not call this number? Right? That's because you don't want you calling the police. You want you to call them and say he's a bad driver, and then maybe do something about it. But at the end of the day, I say this to, to everybody in this room. If you like what I do, don't just tell me. Tell my boss. Right? That way he says, all 100 people in that room all like what Graham did. He must be really good. I'll give him a pay rise. But if you just tell me, okay, yeah, I feel good about it. Right? But I'm not going to get a pay rise from my boss. I've got to go and tell him what well, 100 people said I was good. So you want to collaborate. You want to give people a platform to collaborate. You want your customers to collaborate. And I like using banks a lot because I do a lot of banking and everybody deals with banks. Is it a good idea to offer social networking tools to your customers if you're a bank? Giving them communities, giving them a platform to blog and Twitter on your website. Right? Where other people, like Shireen here, who's going to be looking for a bank loan, to come to my bank's website and see what other people think about my bank loans. Is that a good idea? Yes. It's a great idea, right? I think it's a great idea. First of all, you're going to say all the bad things about my bank loans or my bank accounts. Right? That sounds bad, doesn't it? Because he's going to go look onto the website and go, don't get a bank loan from this bank because they charge you too much interest. Or they take double payments every other month by mistake. Right? Or they don't take a payment from you and then suddenly tell you you've got to pay three in advance. Right? All these things that could, could go wrong with the banking system. If it stays like that, then it's bad. Now, he put, somebody puts on the website, don't bank here because of the bank loans are terrible, the interest rates are too high, they overcharge me. I, as a bank, have an opportunity to respond to that comment. Sorry about you being overcharged. If you rectify that situation, it won't happen again. Now, he's looking for the bank loan. He sees that and goes, oh, this bank listens to its customers. It reacts. It changes. And then that person who wasn't happy is now happy. I think I'll get my bank loan with them. So it gives you that platform to actually encourage other customers to come and encourage your customers to stay. Because you know what? Again, they're doing that same thing. If you don't like what we do, tell us. You know what? And as the bank, I can actually moderate what goes on that side as well. Okay. So you need that to do that. Again, another form of collaboration. And if I do run out of time, I'm sorry. Right? Instant messaging. Right? On your external instant messaging for the people to communicate with you. IBM does this. You can go to IBM's website and you can see if IBM people are online. And then you can start an instant chat with them if they're online. If I'm a bank and I've got a call center, uh, who banks would want any of the big corporates like Barclays, HSBC? Everybody, you do? Yeah. No. Everybody banks for local bank? Yeah. All very loyal. Very good. Right. Where are your bank's call centers? Do you know? Anybody here work in a call center? Yeah. Do, do you know? Yeah. Where are they? They're in Karachi. Okay. I've got to ask this question because I don't really know and it shows my ignorance. Does everybody in Pakistan speak the same language? No. No. I don't think they did. Right? Does everybody have the same accent? No. No. Does everybody, when they meet somebody else from a different region in Pakistan, understand what they say? Most of the time. Most of the time? Always. In England, there are areas where I can go and I cannot understand a single word of what people say. I have relatives who live in Liverpool, right in the centre of Liverpool. So everybody knows Liverpool, right? 
Who's the best football team in the world? Liverpool. Manchester. Manchester. Okay, we're, we're going to get fights outside. Um, in my part of Liverpool and in my part of Manchester, their accents are very, very deep. Right? All I hear when my cousin talks to me is, and then I see him laugh, so I know he's just told a joke. So I laugh as well. Now, if he was phoning up a call centre and he's got a complaint about his bank account, he's going to go, the call centre's going to go, hello, this is the call centre, and he's going to go, and they're going to go, right, I don't know what he said. Um, yes, we'll fix that for you straight away, sir. Now, accents don't come across when you type something, right? Poor English might, but accents don't. Different languages don't. You have a unified language. So when you use instant messaging to communicate with the call centre, it has multiple benefits. One, it reduces mistakes. And two, it actually means they can do two calls, three calls, four calls, five calls at the same time. So he's, who here has actually called their call centre and found press 1 for XYZ, press 2 for credit cards, says 3 for the bank account, and then press 1 if you're the new customer, 2 if you're a current customer, press 3 if you've lost your bank, your, your, your bank card or whatever. Who's done that? Spent half an hour pressing buttons on the phone. And then have got, your call is important to us, please hold. <laughs> Happens every single time. And eventually you, and now let's, let's imagine if that call centre was you applying for that car loan. Are you going to stay on? Zero budget. Yeah, there is a, actually there is a list on the website about shortcuts, but I, I believe lots of, now that list went out, lots of the call centres have closed those loops. So <coughs> the zero is hanging up. In fact, I've even been on, your call is important to us, please hold, then actually got the... Hello? <laughs> they hung up on me. So, hate it. That's where instant messaging actually can be really, really beneficial because they can't run away from instant messaging. It's on the screen. And you can start to number one, and then number one, and then number one, and then number one, and there's always somebody there. So, and here's a great thing again. That, that please hold it, right? You can't leave the phone, can you? Because you, you, know, you really do need to speak to them. So, you're desperate for the bathroom, or you're desperate for your coffee, so you want to go into the kitchen to make a cup of coffee. Right? So if you run into the coffee kitchen, you put yourself on speakerphone in the living room, run to the kitchen to make coffee, and then you go, hello, hello. And then by the time you got back, they hung up because they didn't need you there. That doesn't happen on instant messaging. You can go and make a cup of coffee. You, you can go and do something else. You know? You can carry on working. So you, you can multitask as well as them. So it's very, very useful to offer collaboration tools to your customers. Don't think you want to manage good team risk. Again, we talk about the unified desktop, right? If you're offering everything through the portal, all of your applications, one, you don't care about the desktop. Two, you don't care what your end users bring on their desktop because everything that they do for business is through the portal. So you're controlling all your licenses and what people do with the software. Increase operational efficiency. So not only is your IT department very efficient, but your end users are because they've got everything in one place. And they've got everything that they want, not what you think they want. So they're very efficient. So, we talk about the portal and the portal framework, and then there's facilities through the portal, like collaboration, that you want to offer. I'm going to hit on two key accelerators that we talk about, right, that help you deliver personalized portals for your organization. Because not every organization wants everything that you could actually offer through a portal, right? Some organizations may not want to do collaboration. I'm going to go through two key aspects, one of which every organization needs. The first portal that everybody ever delivers is an enhancement to the current static or dynamic website, which is the deliberation, delivery of information. So the first portal you ever create, be it a website or a dynamic website, is information, right? I remember 10 years ago, right, if you were a new organization starting up, everybody told you, you need a web presence. So you quickly bang together a web page, buy a border domain name and have your hosting number, didn't you? Well, now you need more than a web presence because you've got to start telling people what to do and how to interact with you. So your first portal is the information. So the first thing that we have to offer you is a content accelerator, which can be delivered through your current portal or through our portal. And it offers you web content, document libraries, and enterprise search. And I'm running that attack, I'm running for these quickly. Right? So dynamic content, up-to-date content, content that expires on its own, content that your marketing department, HR department, <laughs> and different development departments that want to give out information can control themselves. So you can take away a burden of operations 
from the IT department. So, anybody here from IT? Lots of people, right? Do you currently manage your internal website and external websites? Do you put the content? I'm not saying you create the content. I'm saying, are you responsible for ensuring the content gets exposed to the web? Yeah? Isn't that cumbersome? Right? What happens is the marketing department creates the content, they send it to you, you check it, then you make sure that it's the right content to go through, you go through an approval process, a change control request, then you put it on the website. And no sooner is it on the website is a marketing department telling you, okay, that's fine, can you take it off now? Is that correct? That, that sort of process is it, right? Whether it be a day or a week or two weeks or a month. Why can't they just do that themselves? Yeah? Why can't they just deliver the content and send it through a workflow process and have that delivered by on their own? It's their responsibility now. If, if you're the one, as the, lots of IT people here, how often have you been told off, chastised, for the fact that your web content's out of date by the people who hasn't actually told you to take it off yet? They put the blame on you again, right? Now it's their fault. If, if the content's out of date, it's their fault for not controlling you. So, another one about particularly around marketing and using, again, I like using shops a lot, right? For instance, if I'm going to have a special offer 50% off bananas today, right? If I had to get that out onto the web quickly, most of our IT procedures won't let us do that. Right? They've got to go for a change control, they've got to go for a approval process. By the time we got on the web, that was two days' time and the problem they offered was yesterday. Then you've got complaining customers who are complaining that the bananas weren't on offer in the shop. If you let the marketing department or even the, the supermarkets control that, they can dynamically update the content and be responsible for it being taken off again. So, you've got to create, target, and optimize your content quite simply. It's not your job to do that, it is somebody else's job. This is a content creator's job to do that. Whether it goes on the website is the approver's responsibility, so you need a workflow process. That's what web content allows you to do, and document libraries allow you to do. So, you want it to be quick and easy, so our solution comes with lots of templates. I'm not going to try and sell you anything, so I'm going through all these. Lots and lots of examples our marketing teams can do for you. It's a really good one, which actually isn't about content, right? about web content. Dunkin' Donuts. Do you have Dunkin' Donuts here? Yeah. yeah. You do? I'm going to tell you an interesting story. I was in one particular country, it was South Africa, I believe, right? Where I asked them, do we have Dunkin' Donuts? They went, no. I went, you don't have Dunkin' Donuts? No. Oh my god, my, my key example isn't going to work. Ah, do you have Krispy Kreme Donuts? Another big donut maker. Uh, no. Oh my god, I'm lost here. And I said, well, what do you police eat? <laughs> and then they said, we don't have police. I went, okay. So Dunkin' Donuts. They don't use Web Content Manager to deliver information to the web for their customers. Their internal suppliers in their shops use Web Content Management to order supplies and let the head office know when they need more of developing donut mixtures or the, 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 the donut preparation tools or whatever. And they use that on handheld devices using mobile, web, web screen, mobile portal devices. There's a different use of Web Content. Not what it was designed for, but that's what they've implemented. That's why I like that one. The other one, and this really again referred mostly to bikes, but it can refer to any business that has forms. Now there are three main organisations that use forms. Anybody here from the healthcare industry works in a hospital, clinic? Anybody here from a bank? Insurance company? Anybody from government? This is very hard. Most we get mostly insurance and government. Okay, there are three divisions that are very, very process driven. They use forms a lot. Okay, anybody, have, anybody here fill forms in? Spend hours filling a form in your hand. Right? Could it be for a new driving license, it could be for applying for a bank loan. Right? Electronic forms, again using it in the context I used earlier on about applying for a new loan. All that data could be filled in automatically. Even the approval process could be done automatically using electronic forms. To the point where the only thing that a person needs to do could be the bank manager giving the final seal of approval that you can get the bank loan. And that could mean you need to come down to the bank to actually physically sign the form because regulation says you must have a paper form and it's simply signed. So using workflow and forms and digital signatures, you can actually increase the, uh, the processes that you have in your organisation to a point where people aren't involved 
and timing the bank, for instance, of, of doing a, a bank loan can be taken down from a week to an hour. And we have many examples where that has used that. Um, some nice little comments. Those are form components, digital, so on. So, I'm going very, very quickly. What we're looking at is a new generation of web experiences, a new generation of user, end user experiences we're using the web at their internet and portals. And why do I, I'm going to say now, now I'm going to do a bit of marketing, why would you use WebSphere Portal over building your own using open source, using Oracle, using Microsoft SharePointless? Right? One, we're number one in the world, have been for the last nine years. Second one, more than 7,000 worldwide customers in business to business, business to customers, and business to employees all using our portal. 47% of those customers are SMB, so it's not just for the large enterprise. Everybody gets this impression that IBM is expensive. Who here thinks IBM is cheap? Sorry, I shouldn't use the word cheap. Who here thinks IBM is inexpensive? Nobody. Who thinks we're expensive? Who thinks that our solutions are for the enterprise only? Quite a few people. We need to change that, that viewpoint. Time, okay, one more minute then, because I'm going to put your slide, right? We are for everybody. We have solutions for SMB that are cheaper than many of our competitors, cheaper than Microsoft. We have uh, the smallest customer, it says here, it's 11 m 40 The larger customer has 1.8 million. That would be the US Army, I think. No one market share, it says 8.9. Globally, 10 of the top 10 banks. 8 of the top 10 retailers, 12 of the top 10, I don't need to go on. All the top companies use it, as well as many of the smaller companies. <coughs> we keep on adding things to it, like, in fact, we're going to be launching Portal 7 later in the year, which is going to add more features on the collaboration social networking side. Right? Why do we the leaders? Because we think about what our customers want. You know, we spoke to the CIOs here today, we do this worldwide. We find out what you want and then we deliver it. We don't just deliver something and tell you this is what you want. It's a big differentiator. Microsoft does that. Okay, well, thank you.